Conducting transactions on the blockchain isn't always easy, especially at first. But there are certain sites that help us navigate the blockchain and they definitely help us give us a better understanding on how the blockchain actually functions. Let's head over to one of those sites right now. Now lately I've conducted some transactions in Ether and I'm also familiar with their blockchain explorer. So I'm just gonna head over to etherscan.io. Easy enough, there it is. Here you can search by address, transaction hash, block, token, or Ethereum name service address. And it will come up with all information associated with the address or the transaction, making it a very handy tool. It's important to note that this is the Blockchain Explorer for Ethereum. It says right here, the Ethereum Block Explorer. However, each cryptocurrency has one. Uh, each cryptocurrency has a Blockchain Explorer. And all you have to really do to find the Block Explorer for your blockchain, simply type in the name of the blockchain in Google, followed by Block Explorer, and should be one of the first few results. And all of these sites really function the same. They just give details and insight into each transaction, what each address has been doing, helps you navigate the information around the blockchain. The blockchain identifies each transaction with something called the transaction hash. This is a long alphanumeric string of characters that is unique to every single transaction on the blockchain, so it can be used to identify specific transactions. Here you can see a couple. These are the hash numbers, transaction numbers. Over here, and you can also search up in the bar by transaction hash, and they'll pull up the exact details of that transaction. So let's get into reading an actual receipt. Here you can see a bunch of recent transactions that occurred. I'm just gonna click on a random one, and that will pull up all of the details for that specific transaction. Right here you can see the transaction hash that we just talked about, the unique identifier used to identify every transaction on the blockchain. You can save that for your records for every transaction and just have a reference to bring that up by just searching by that transaction hash. And all those details will be at your fingertips. This next bit of information also acts as an identifier. Right here you have the block height, which is the number block that your transaction is contained in. Now you may recall that each block is made up of several different transactions, several different transaction hashes, and all the information that goes along with that transaction. Basically, your transaction hash identifies a specific transaction, while the block height identifies which block or where that transaction is contained in. These next bits of information are pretty self-explanatory. Here you see timestamp, which is simply when the transaction occurred, the exact date and time, from the address that is sending the funds, to the address that's receiving the funds, and here you see the value of the cryptocurrency that's being sent. Remember, we're working with Ether. That's why we're on Etherscan, the Ethereum blockchain. Here you can see. And here's an approximate monetary value in US dollars of how much the transaction was worth. And here's where things get a little bit more complex when it comes to reading receipts. See, these that we are yet to go over right here all have to do with gas. So let's give you a reminder of what exactly gas is and what it does. So we actually know what we're reading here. Gas is the unit that is consumed by the Ethereum virtual machine, which processes transactions. It is a separate unit than Ether, but the monetary cost is paid for in Ether. Gas is essentially a transaction fee, but here's the good part. The transaction fees literally usually come to cents. Here you can see the actual transaction fee for this transaction. And they sent about 115 US dollars and were only charged 10 cents in gas. 10 cents to send that amount of money, it's pretty impressive. Anyway, here you have a gas limit, which is just basically the amount of gas that you're willing to spend on a transaction. You might not hit that limit, as you can see here. The gas limit was 50,000, but the gas used by the transaction was just under 21,000. So pretty much any ether that they put up for gas that's different, that's different here, will be refunded to the sender. Here's a standard gas price. Exactly how much does the gas cost? Here you can see it's, gas price is simply the fixed price that gas is set at. Over here you can see the exact amount in ether. Again, it's a very small number. 
and here you actually have something called GUE, 25 GUE. Uh, that's just a denomination of ether, so instead of writing this big number, it can be simplified to this. It's the same thing. Most transactions are actually recommended to uh, contain. The last thing I want to go over on a receipt is this right here, a nonce. What exactly is a nonce? Nonce is used to prevent something called double spending. Basically, it's a number that acts as an identifier, so it doesn't allow you to spend the same cryptocurrency twice in two separate transactions. So right here is the nonce number that prevents that double spending. So now that we've gone over this receipt here, I want to look at one that's a little bit different. Here you go, it has pretty much all the same details. Transaction hash, block height, timestamp, from. The only thing that's different right here is the two column. This is because this transaction was not sending ether from one place to another. No, instead this was actually an investment in the kin token sale. You can see that the person laid down 75 ether at the time of the transaction was worth about 20 and a half thousand. Instead of sending it to a normal ether address, they sent it to the kin contract. Since kin's an ERC20 token, it can function this way. So this person, this address sent 75 ETH and got the equivalent amount in the KIN token. We actually just did an ICO. We actually just did an ICO or no about the KIN token, so we'll leave that link down in the description if you're interested at all. So that's our walkthrough on how to read a transaction receipt. It definitely can be intimidating at first, but we hope this video helped clarify some things for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments and we'll get back to you. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it and also subscribe to make sure that you get any future videos. This has been Jeremy with Blockchain WTF. We'll see you next time.